Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Wednesday. Over here in the Atlantic, we have Hurricane Rena in the Western Caribbean that we are watching. And boy, this is actually kind of interesting what happened last night. If we look at the storm on the floater loop here, some of you will be able to tell right away that this is not the same storm that we went to bed with last night. And this is what I woke up with when the recon came out. I woke up when this was popping up on my Google Earth and immediately the center is noticeable here. The winds don't even drop under 15 knots in the eye. If you can call it an eye, we probably don't even have an eye anymore. And then the winds don't uh, get over 65 knots in the southwestern part of the center. So this hurricane has definitely weakened a whole lot since last night and the pressure is up to extrapolated 984 millibars in the center right now which means that Rena has rapidly weakened overnight. And this is a very interesting thing to have happened. Very fortunate for the folks along the northeastern Yucatan here. But the big question right now is why this happened. There are only two real reasons that can be postulated at this point. One is dry air entrainment, and the other is cold water upwelling underneath the storm because she was moving slowly, which evaporates a lot of ocean water and cools it down, plus churning up colder waters from the depths of the ocean. And dry air entrainment, I think, can be checked off right now as not particularly likely because the environment around her has been fairly moist and we can see that based on the CIMSS total precipitable water product she's still in a very moist environment you can make a little argument that there's a tiny tongue of dry air getting entrained from the east right now but as we talked about this moist push has allowed all this dry air to retreat into the Gulf of Mexico on the western side and the dry air that was in here in the Gulf of Honduras has been pushed back up here and therefore I don't think this was really the problem last night it is inhibiting outer spiral bands out in here but it has not gotten into the core I think the bigger problem is upwelling and now, of course, everyone's going to ask, well, how come we didn't see this coming? And the answer is that we knew it was a possibility. However, I was basing this on the idea that if we look at Rena's speed in here, she really wasn't moving that much slower or faster than Wilma. And Wilma herself in here is a Category 5, the strongest ever that we've seen in the Atlantic. She was moving very slowly as well through the same region and did not have this problem. And the ocean heat content for Rena in 2011 and Wilma in 05 weren't really that different over here in the Western Caribbean. And based on that, I was not really expecting upwelling to be a huge issue for Rena based on her similar forward movement to Wilma during her peak intensity and the fact that Wilma was even stronger and didn't have this problem. But apparently, I would guess that this is what is going on right now. And that is supported by the look on the satellite here. There's absolutely no banding between the center of the storm and anywhere else on the eastern side, implying that the cold water is underneath and to the east of the system in here, which is inhibiting banding on the eastern side, but we have plenty of banding on the northern and western sides here. However, all this dry air up here in the northwest is also inhibiting areas where there should be banding. These low-level cloud streets up here indicate where a spiral band should be, but it has evaporated due to the dry air in proximity, and thus the storm isn't getting really a chance to grow. Lots of times when these storms weaken suddenly like this, all of a sudden all this air has to pile up on the outside of the storm instead of the core of the storm, and you get these spiral bands to go off, just like when a storm is going over land, and that usually helps the storm to expand its pressure field field and have a larger presence in the atmosphere even if the overall pressure at the center starts to rise. But here, Rena's is being inhibited on the outside as well, so this may be a very glorious collapse of her, uh, of the storm as we go on today. But she's not going to fall entirely apart before moving towards the Cancun area, and she's still probably going to be a hurricane as she comes ashore here. And the strong banding to the north indicates that she's not going to fall apart entirely. So the folks in here should still have their hurricane warning out and be ready ready for a hurricane hit, but this fortunately is not likely now to be a major hurricane hit like it was going to be yesterday if this sudden weakening had not occurred. So this is definitely very fortunate news for them. And now this is going to start changing uh, some of the some of the reasoning for the track here. Now, if we look at the models, we have the general agreement that this will curve up around this high. This Remember, this high is rolling off of the Georgia-South Carolina coast now, and it's going to allow Rena to start curving north here. And once she hits the Cancun area, notice that we have a lot of spaghetti lines that move up towards the Yucatan, and then we have only a very few that come out of it and move towards the South Florida area, which was our forecast yesterday. Now that Rena has weakened considerably, there is a lot of dry air now over the Gulf of Mexico. 
Mexico that she is going to be more susceptible to, kind of like Paula of last year. And a lot of this situation with Rena has been very similar to Paula and Wilma in different ways as we've gone along here. And the forecast here has been based on, it has been actually founded on the idea that Rena was going to be like a cross between Wilma and Paula, be stronger than Paula and be able to better withstand the effects of wind shear and dry air in the Gulf, but not as strong as Wilma and thus not as strong in Florida, and the track was going to be in between. But now she's looking a little bit more like Paula, and this is how Paula looked after she became a cat too and then peaked. Her core started to weaken as she got up in here and then she short she short of short of sort of fell apart as she moved towards Cuba here and this is the Paula track she came up became a cat too and then she got shunted southward by that front and we can see on the GFS by 72 hours we have this front that comes down and the mid-level flow is going to be out of the west southwest trying to take the storm out over south Florida but if she's weakening a lot especially if she moves over the northeast Yucatan this high pressure that builds in behind the front could trap the storm and help shunt it off and only slow movement off to the east or east southeast towards western Cuba very similar to the Paula track here and then weakening with time so we may actually be seeing the original track from the NHC near western Cuba or just north of and weakening steadily coming true here as uncertain as they said it was it may end up being fairly correct here if she actually continues weakening and once she gets up here she'll be more susceptible and perhaps weaken a, a lot more to a tropical storm or weaker as she comes across it's still possible for her to affect South Florida directly here but she would likely be even weaker than forecasted yesterday and is unlikely to be a hurricane event for Florida and and probably just a rainy, blustery weekend if she reaches her tendrils up that far. So this is not as bad of a situation as it could have been, which is great news for everyone involved here, but the Yucatan is still due to get a hurricane hit, and thus they should be very careful during the next 48 hours or so. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.